My name is David Newman, and I have the honor to serve as the Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at ESF. As we begin our ceremony, I would like to ask Ms. Regina Ryan, a staff member in ESF's Human Resources Department, to lead us in the singing of the National Anthem. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's seated. President Mahoney, Chancellor Severud, members of the platform party, fellow faculty and staff members, students and guests, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 College of Environmental Science and Forestry Convocation Ceremony. Through this event, we want to welcome our new students as well as acknowledge our continuing students as they embark on this adventure in learning that we call ESF. As we begin our ceremony, I want to recognize that our ESF campus resides within the original territory of the Haudenosaunee or Iroquois Confederacy. This acknowledgement represents our commitment to intellectual and cultural pluralism, and it is meant to honor the significant contributions of the Onondaga Nation to environmental leadership. We are grateful for previous and ongoing collaborations with the Onondaga Nation. Now first, I would like to introduce our platform party for this event. Please rise as I call your name, and I will start with the administrators here today. President Joni Mahoney, SU Chancellor Kent Severud, Associate Provost for Enrollment Management, Kitty McCarthy. Chief Diversity Offer, Officer, Dr. Malika Carter. And Vice Provost and Dean for Student Affairs, Dr. Ann Lombard. Next are Academic Department Chairs and Directors. Dr. Vandaru Ramarao from Chemical Engineering. Dr. Avik Chatterjee from Chemistry. Dr. Melissa Furkey from Environmental Biology, Dr. Lindy Quackenbush, Environmental Resources Engineering, Dr. Russ Briggs, Division of Environmental Science, Dr. Teresa Selfa, Environmental Studies, Mr. Scott Shannon from Landscape Architecture. Scott also serves as the Associate Provost for Instruction and the Dean of the Graduate School. Dr. Chris Nowak, Sustainable Resources Management, and Matt Smith, the Director of Moon Library. Finally, the other speakers for today, Dr. Oates Therasme, speaking as a representative of the faculty, Lexi Chapoulis, the President of USA, Melody Berger, 
the president of GSA, and Alex Allard, who has served as the head orientation leader. Now, I was told to use my time today to introduce myself and the role that I have at e as ESS provost and reflect on the educational opportunity that is before you today. As provost, I am the chief academic officer of the college, so I work with the president and her cabinet, the department chairs, faculty, and students on campus to provide oversight for all academic activities and programs here on this campus. That means I have a responsibility for everything related to academic engagement and the student experience at ESF. So what exactly does that mean? Our objective here at ESF is to provide a unique learning experience that will prepare you not only to be skilled and knowledgeable in your field, but also to have the wherewithal to become lifelong learners. You might ask why this is necessary, but as we have seen over the past year and a half, the world sometimes changes in ways that we can't even imagine. So we have to be willing to explore new things to keep up with that change. Some examples of this change. When I was a freshman in college, which was a very long time ago, my high school graduation pres present was a portable typewriter. They, that was a big deal. My first calculator was a TI-10 that could add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and cost me $80. For an extra $20, you could get the TI-12, which came with one memory key and the ability to do squares, square roots, and had pi. All computer work was done on punch cards that you had to submit to the mainframe computer wizards and you received a printout sometime later. We went to field exercises in the back of a stakeside pickup truck, and overheads were the height of classroom technology. Finally, the library was the only place to go if you actually wanted to find out some information. Imagine that. So, even though the experience will not be part of your experience, you can bet that in the future, many of the things we now see as exceptional will be distant memories. What won't change is the fact that the training that I receive and you will receive will allow us to integrate new information as it occurs and adapt to the changes that can be both dramatic and rapid. Hopefully that is why you are here, to take advantage of what ESF can provide to you to make your world better and make you better prepared. E itself, ESF itself is a good example of the way that institutions can adapt to change. The college started in 1911 as the New York State College of Forestry at Syracuse University. Its focus was forestry, but soon added auxiliary programs in engineering, chemistry, and landscape architecture. We became part of SUNY in 1948 and in 1972, the college changed its name to environmental science and forestry. Since its founding, programs have waxed and waned to where we are now recognized as a unique and specialized college within the SUNY system with primacy in the environmental sciences. Now back to adapting to change. Your class will see much as much change as almost any in the history of the college. We are continuing to adjust to the changes that COVID has brought us, and we will return to face-to-face -to -face classes this year in full. We are very excited about that. Marshall Hall, the second oldest building on campus, will be completing its renovations and should be reopening sometime next year, creating a totally transformed and world-class learning space. The outcome will be a building that represents the things that ESF stands for, transforming your world, that, and that can carry the college forward. It won't be easy or necessarily pretty while the work is going on, but you will all be able to take advantage of this revitalized building before you graduate. 
Now, as new ESF students, there are really only a few things that you can expect from us. A world-class education, a great campus experience, and the support you need to succeed academically. It is our shared responsibility to see that these things happen, and we will do our best to make sure they do. This week of orient orientation that you have just experienced was designed to help facilitate your integration into our campus and to help you become aware of the various resources available to you. I want to express my gratitude to our orientation planners, the orientation leaders, international student orientation mentors, our resident assistants, and the faculty and staff who have worked so hard to make your arrival and orientation such a smooth experience. Now, at this time, I would like to present you to President Mahoney, the platform party, and the greater community gathered here to mark your transition from orientation participants to fully matriculated students and full-fledged members of the ESF community. Will all our new students please rise? We welcome you to the ESF community and hope that you embody the ESF ethos. This ethos is to combine practical skills and wisdom. It is based on respect, knowledge, gratitude, and care. It celebrates the values that are held in such high regard at ESF. Curiosity, creativity, collaboration, integrity, and inclusion. President Mahoney and members of the platform party, it is my honor and privilege to present to you members of the ESF classes of 2024 and 2025. And let us formally welcome them to our community and wish them great success. <laughs> Congratulations all. Best of luck as you begin your studies next week. And you may now be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce Ms. Catherine, or Kitty McCarthy, who serves as the Associate Provost of Enrollment Management for the college. Kitty came to ESF a little over a year ago from Radford College in Virginia. Welcome, Ms. McCarthy. Good afternoon and welcome to ESF. We are so excited to have our new first year and transfer students with us. Um, as Dr. Newman said, I came to ESF just about one year ago and I have been looking forward to greeting you my first ESF class and especially excited to see the ESF campus in full swing with many activities and much engagement. In my role in enrollment management, I work closely with undergraduate admissions and the Office of Financial Aid and the entire ESF community to recruit students to ESF who are capable, capable, passionate about the environment and the world we live in and who work to create change, students just like you. There is another quality I would add to characterize ESF students in the ESF community and that word is optimistic. Each of you has a story to tell about the challenges you have overcome, which makes your being here even more remarkable. Fairly recently, there may have been times when optimism seemed like a luxury, yet it is quite the opposite. To move forward, we must be optimistic. In a New York Times article, writer Chris, Kristen Wong shared some valuable advice. To be optimistic, we must practice compassion toward ourselves and each other. We must find pleasure in the small things. Look, look for meaning, give back, and build community. You are in a unique and enviable position to do all of those things here at ESF. By choosing to enroll here, by taking the next step in your education, and creating a vital future for yourselves, your families, your communities, and your environment, you are expressing your optimism. And we are thrilled you are making this journey at ESF. 
I'd like to introduce our new undergraduates collectively. Over 500 new first year and transfer students will be with us this fall. We received more than 2,800 applications for admission for fall 2021, and approximately 62% of our applicants were admitted. You are joining 40 new transfer students who recently arrived at the ESF Ranger School. While most of our students are from New York State, out-of-state representation is strong, with about 20% of our new students coming to us from other states and countries. For our first year students, your mean high school GPA is about a 93% or a 3.7 on a four point scale. Almost one third of our new students have expressed an interest in environmental biology. In addition, we welcome our new students to the departments of sustainable resources management, environmental resources engineering, sustainability management, environmental science and environmental studies, along with chemistry chemical engineering, landscape architecture, and our undeclared option. I encourage you to work hard, get to know one another, and connect with the people and resources here to support your success. And be optimistic, always. It is a great honor for me to present all of our new undergraduates to President Joni Mahoney. It is now my pleasure to welcome Dean Scott Shannon, the Associate Provost for Instruction and Dean of the Graduate School. Scott is also a member of the Landscape Architecture faculty and received a BLA and MLA from ESF and also a degree from Syracuse University. Welcome Dean Shannon. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to welcome and introduce the fall 2021 entering class of graduate students. You are a remarkably accomplished group and we are proud to have you all here today on the threshold of beginning your careers as graduate students here at ESF. I'd like to begin by sharing a few details about this year's class and particularly given the circumstances of the last 18 months, how remarkable it is that each of you have come to be here at ESF. 260 applications were made for graduate study this fall, with 119 accepted and committed to enroll, our largest entering class since 2014. And this isn't just a large group. It's also geographically diverse. We have students coming from 14 different countries outside the United States and 17 states plus the District of Columbia within. Finally, and perhaps most impressively, this is clearly a very talented and academically accomplished group as well. The average undergraduate GPA of this class was 3.65, higher than we've ever seen as an aggregate undergraduate GPA for the second year running. The average GRE score was 157, or approximately the 67th percentile of GRE takers worldwide, just shy of our aggregate high a year ago. Sadly, we will still be missing many of the international students who had hoped to be here today, as the pandemic travel restrictions continue to make coming to Syracuse quite difficult. But for those who've made it, you're clearly a dedicated and persistent group. For those who could not be here, many have deferred to entry to January or to next fall, and we're pleased to say that they too will ultimately join this outstanding group eventually and take their rightful places among you all. So, there's much for all of you to look forward to during your time here at ESF. While much of the world around us will undoubtedly remain preoccupied with the pandemic, we are still pretty certain that many of the biggest challenges facing all of us today are directly connected to the environment. Here at ESF this fall, you'll still get the opportunity to learn how to better understand and develop means of mitigating or arresting climate change, to develop and advocate for more effective environmental policies. Others will learn to develop novel and more sustainable materials and energy sources, to plan and design more resilient communities, and to learn to protect and restore critical habitats and biodiversity around the globe. 
As the Im impacts of the pandemic ultimately wanes and global economies continue to recover and normalize, acquiring this knowledge and developing these skills and making these efforts will be more critical than ever to securing a better future for all of us. You are the generation of graduate students that will need to move these efforts forward towards success. And I can't think of a better place or a better time to be taking your next steps. Good luck and have a great fall semester. I would now like to introduce President Joni Mahoney to provide a few words to the class. President Mahoney became ESS's fifth, fifth president and first female president this past November. Joni. Thank you, Provost. Um, good afternoon. I am Joni Mahoney, president of the SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry, and I welcome you to the official start of the 2021-2022 academic year. I want to thank Chancellor Siverud for joining us today. ESF enjoys a unique and special 100-year partnership with Syracuse University, and we appreciate the Chancellor being here with us today. To the incoming class of 2021, you're here today because you have a desire, a passion to improve your world, and we're honored that you've chosen ESF to be a cornerstone of that pursuit. Your years at ESF will be among the most formative of your life. If we, the faculty and staff, do our jobs as well as we'd like to, you will leave ESF with an understanding of your chosen path forward to a rewarding life and career. Whether it's biology, forestry, engineering, chemistry, landscape architecture, or environmental studies, what you learn here will take root and grow in the years to come. You'll see the world differently than you have before as you acquire knowledge, meet people from different backgrounds, and form your own opinions based on science and facts. I encourage you to dive in and sample all ESF has to offer. You've countless opportunities to try new things, study subjects you hadn't considered before, and explore new interests. You have the opportunity to learn, grow, and form lifelong friendships, as well as make important professional connections. Immerse yourself in new adventures, new opportunities, new challenges. These are the experiences that will help to shape and define you. What you learn at ESF will help you digest and understand the pressing environmental issues of our time. The recent report from the United Nations paints a challenge for our planet. Sea levels rising up to two feet higher by 2100, increased extreme heat waves and a drop in frequency of cold weather events, mountain and polar glaciers will continue to melt. The report also states that those events can still be prevented if we act now if we reduce greenhouse gas emissions through the use of clean technology, plant more trees, and live more sustainably, we can mitigate the effects of climate change on our planet. There's one thing that the UN report does not take into account, and that is you. You are the ones who will make a difference. You're joining a community with a collective commitment to do all we can to make the world a better, more environmentally sustainable and socially just place for generations to come. You are making a difference simply by choosing ESF, a place where the environment comes first and science is our middle name. The college is a leader on numerous lists of green and sustainable schools. Sustainability is something we hold in high regard and many of you no doubt will help us become more sustainable during your time here with us. We've received several recent accolades during uh, the recent past. The Princeton Review naming ESF number two among the top 50 green colleges. Sierra Club ranking us number three in their cool schools list. Money Magazine ranked ESF 12th among the best small colleges. 
and ESF has received platinum rating from the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System known as STARS. You'll soon discover that ESF has incredibly accomplished faculty members who are renowned leaders in their fields. They are the experts the media call to break down complicated issues or provide insight into matters that combine science and social justice. Your professors are in high demand from government and non-government agencies alike. They're looking for the science and research necessary to make environmentally sound policy decisions. And as a result, you students will have the opportunity to work for these agencies as interns or perhaps to make your career. You will have the opportunity to participate in hands-on research here in Syracuse or at one of the college's satellite properties. We have 25,000 acres of outdoor labs across New York State that are well-developed platforms for education and research on real-world problems in environmental science, forestry, natural resources management, and other disciplines. These include the Thousand Islands Biological Station, the Newcomb Campus and Huntington Forest, Cranberry Lake Biological Station, Pack Demonstration and Experimental Forests, Dubar Forest, and the Ranger School in the Adirondacks, as well as properties a short ride south in Lafayette and Tully. I encourage you to take advantage of these amazing properties, if not for coursework, then for a hike in the woods to connect with the very environment we strive to protect. It is sometimes in quiet moments that we make our greatest discoveries. Be sure to take that time for yourself. You never know what you will learn. You may have noticed some construction on campus, as the provost mentioned, that Marshall Hall is being reconstructed and you will be among the first students to benefit from that renovation. It is one of the oldest buildings on campus and soon will be the most modern building on campus. The latest technologies are being installed side by side with the restoration features that give Marshall Hall its distinct character. When it's completed, it will house the Departments of Landscape Architecture, Environmental Studies, and the Division of General Education. The building's new classrooms and studios, flexible collaboration spaces, and enhanced accessibility will benefit the entire ESF community. A little closer on the campus timeline is the cafe opening in Moon Library in December. It's conveniently located where you will spend many hours studying. It's gonna offer pastries, grab and go food, and of course, coffee that's perfect for those late night study sessions. And, classroom, and college isn't all classrooms and assignments. Some of you may have heard that there's a social aspect to college as well. ESF has a wide selection of clubs and organizations for you to explore. You can continue a, a ongoing interest or develop a new passion. If you like the outdoors, the Bob Marshall Club offers opportunities for hiking and camping. And if you've never done that before, you're gonna be uh, met by people who are more than happy to show you the ropes. The Music Society welcomes all musicians, singers, and instrumentalists to come together and fill our spaces with music. And there are clubs dedicated to many of the social issues that we face as a nation where you'll find like-minded people working to build an inclusive and equitable future for all of us. The ESF athletic teams, your own Mighty Oaks, return to the playing fields this fall, offering a chance for us to come together and cheer on our teams. And of course, you can always cross Forestry Drive and cheer on the orange. I'd like to take a moment to thank our exceptional faculty, staff, and student leaders, including student ambassadors, resident advisors, and orientation leaders for making this day possible. Thank you to all of you. There is more to discover at ESF than the handful of things that I've mentioned, and I leave the thrill of those discoveries to you. Welcome to ESF. I look forward to watching you learn, grow, and become an integral part of our community dedicated to improving our world. I now have the pleasure of introducing Syracuse University's Chancellor, Kent Siverud.
Hello, everybody. I want to wake you all up. Not because anybody else put you to sleep, but because I gather it's been a week of orientation and speeches, and it's Friday afternoon, and you're probably thinking what fun things you're going to do later more than this. So uh, I'm going to be really brief, OK? I just want you to know how important each of you is, not just to the SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry, but also to Syracuse University, uh, because you are. I mean, yesterday, just across Forestry Drive in the Carrier Dome, we welcomed 7,000 new students to Syracuse University. And uh, we were in the Carrier Dome. It seats 50,000 people. Uh, there's more than 5,000 faculty and staff. There's 13 schools and colleges. You've seen them hundreds of buildings. There's chaplains in every faith tradition. Uh, there are more than 300 student clubs uh, and activities and club sports and sports teams. There's three radio stations, two television networks we're part of, three hotels, including one in the middle of the Adirondacks. There's campuses and programs in Washington and Los Angeles and New York City and Italy and the UK and France and Spain and Chile. And I tell you all that uh, because Orange is a big place, and at times it's overwhelmingly so. Uh, ESF is smaller in some ways. Uh, there are a smaller number of faculty and students. Uh, the campus on this hill is more compact, but it's a very different story in the Adirondacks, as you just heard, where I spent my summers and where ESF is literally everywhere with the most beautiful lands in the world. Um, so ESF may seem smaller, and that seems and is a terrific advantage at times. But in fact, uh, ESF and Syracuse University are symbiotic organisms uh, that live and thrive in the same ecosystem, and you're part of it, and a very important part of it to us. So I know you're going to learn a hell of a lot more about ecosystems and symbiosis than I know now, uh, <laughs> probably before the year is out. So I'll just say that um, you know, two different organisms living in close physical association for a long time tend to grow together in a long-term relationship. And it can be a parasitic relationship or it can be a mutually beneficial and strengthening relationship. Uh, the, my favorite example of this, because of all my time in the Adirondacks, maybe for a couple of you, is lichens. Okay, all those things on trees, which are actually two organisms that have grown together over time, right? A fungus and usually a green algae, right? Photosynthesis combined. Uh, they've grown, grown close and they've gotten better together. Uh, I think that's true of Syracuse and ESF. I think we share, as your provost told you, a common and an independent history. We have struggled together, we thrive together, we've gone through a lot together, including a pandemic. Um, uh, we are a mutual symbiotic pair. And uh, the fact that ESF in some ways seems smaller does not mean that we don't mutually benefit equally from the pairing. We do. So from the Syracuse University point of view, uh, what we get is we get to be associated with ESF students who I have known in various guises since 1978 when my Brother, my twin brother lived here with a big group of ESF students, and I learned home brewing. Okay, uh, 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 ESF students are distinct. Okay, you're very diverse, but the character, the idiosyncrasies, the values you bring to this whole community, including across Forestry Drive, are really important. Some of the most important changes that have happened at Syracuse University have had, shall we say, the fingerprints of ESF students on them. And that includes being one of the first major colleges to divest from fossil fuels, for example. Um, uh, I'd say that our students take your classes in ESF with you. Uh, they get to know the spectacular ESF students, and that's a benefit. Our faculty work with incredible colleagues in research in a multidisciplinary way that makes it better for all. Um, and that means the two universities work together on the most important issues of our time which I believe really are climate and our world ecosystem. But what I emphasize to you then is therefore, we're benefiting a lot across Forestry Drive from the fact that you're here. So there are benefits from, for you at ESF, 
but you have to be smart enough to take advantage of them. And, and uh, I would say that, you know, obviously uh, a huge research university has all these hidden niches and programs and advantages, and some of them are advertised less than others. You can take a class on a galaxy of subjects. You can take, you can use our recreation and fitness facilities and our camping equipment. Uh, you can use our IT services. There are places to study and to eat and to meet people from the 116 countries that are in the incoming group this year. Um, there are libraries. Uh, there are students from dozens of indigenous nations on our campus and from every state. There are sporting events. There are buses that you're going to be too familiar with, I fear, uh, particularly in snow. But there are also all these people that can help in crisis across all disciplines uh, and all backgrounds. And you can access them all. Uh, and we encourage you to do so. I'm so grateful for the mutual symbiosis that exists between us. It does take us constantly working at it from each side to make it mutually beneficial. And President Mahoney is a master at that and is such a blessing to have here for that reason. We work very closely together pretty much every day. We actually are family. We're not separated by Forestry Drive because we're actually integrated in a thousand different ways every day. And, and so I really need you to feel like that's home across the street too and, and you, you can be there too. And occasionally they recognize that it's okay for a Syracuse University students, many Syracuse students to be here, where rumor is the coffee is often gonna be better, <laughs> right? Um, uh, so it's, we're proud to be orange over there. Uh, we're proud to be associated with folks over here that we consider the greenest and the best college of environmental science in the world. Um, and it's okay to be both, is my point. It's okay to be both. And so when I see somebody in an orange ESF t-shirt, it makes me very, very happy too. So, uh, so please take advantage of everything over there, uh, if you're vaccinated or exempt. <laughs> uh, uh, and please, uh, I think you will find that among those 7,000 new students are some pretty amazing people who even if you're unique over here in your interest in curling or something, there's probably a club of people over there that do it, video gaming or esports or whatever. There's probably a huge group over there to find as well. I hope you find them. Uh, we're so glad you're here. Uh, we're welcome to Syracuse University. Go ESF and go Orange. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Severu. I would now like to welcome Dr. Obst Therasme, an assistant professor in the Department of Sustainable Resources Management, to speak. Dr. Therasme received his PhD from ESF in 2019 and an MS degree from Syracuse University in 2015. He has been a member of the ESF faculty since January of 2020. Good afternoon. It is great to be here. Welcome. Welcome to our new undergraduate and graduate students to the great College of Environmental Science and Forestry, our own ESF. We are here to celebrating you on this day. And this is because you have crossed a finish line. So I've been at Syracuse longer than that than just uh, two years. I remember um, this month of August exactly marks six years. Six years since I have been at the same stage as you are today. Six years since I was being ready to start my first day as an ESF student, though it was for my PhD program. And I still recall this feeling, this feeling of pride, this feeling of achievement, and this desire to see the finish line on that first day. It is my hope that you are sharing those same thoughts of pride, achievement, and the need to see the finish line on this first day. You have already crossed many of them. You are envisioning many others right now. 
And you will probably not just see, but cause many more in the future. While I'm thinking about this metaphor, the concept of finish line is flexible. So what is a finish line? Well, I cannot define it for you, but I can tell you what it is not. It is not a line that is finished. Let me tell you this. A finish line can relate to something personal. Your health, your finances, your family and friendship, your education. It can also relate to something that is part of the community that you're part of. Some of them are attainable in the short term, while some others are going to be attainable in the long term, in 10, 20, 50 years, or maybe 100 years or 1,000 years. Who knows? We don't know. Some require a little effort, while some others require your full attention and dedication. Some are not so important, but some others are so crucial and essential for you and the well-being of the community that you are part of. Well, we will need to look in the future as we kind of envisioning the finish line today. It will help, help us to see the path, the path to a better education, the path to a stand job, a promotion or a better life, the path to a better world. Let me share one personal detail with you. I was born and grew up in Haiti, mostly in a rural area. And I remember that moment when I was still in elementary school. And at that time, I envisioned myself completing a college degree in engineering. I set this as one of my finish line. Here I am. I completed this bachelor degree from the State University of Haiti. I earned a master's degree in chemical engineering from Syracuse University and a PhD program here at ESF. Students, friends, your presence here is a testimony that you too have just crossed a finish line. You want to know what it is? Well, our students are ready to start the first day at ESF, yeah? Yes. Students, at the same moment, at this same moment, you are already envisioning new finish lines. I can list a few for you. Finish line that will have a safe and successful academic year. Finish lines that today is the beginning of a life-changing experience. Finish line that you will be the next generation of scientists engineers, managers, and professionals that will continue to protect the built and natural environment. Finish lines that in two, three, or four years, you will be receiving your diploma. This is very important, right? Well, what does it take to not just see the finish line on this first day, but to cross it at the right time? Let me share a few thoughts with you. One. You need to know that you are surrounded with supporters. Now, as of today, you are part of a new community, ESF, and all of us, we are willing to witness your success. Your professors, the staff, your peers and family members are great resources that you can tap on to help you to reach the next finish line and cross it. Number two, do your part and follow the roadmap. One of the nice things about seeing the finish line on the first day is that it helps you to figure out the roadmap, the path that leads to that finish line. Take your future in your own end. Do your part. Monitor your progress. And remember, take proactive action as needed. Three, enjoy college life. This is the simple example or recommendation I wish someone told me on my first day. <laughs> Do not be like LJ. LJ is a fictional student that I personally invented. LJ spent an entire semester at college 
And he only went to the classroom and the library. Classroom and library. But here's my piece of advice for you. Yes, always go to class. <laughs> always do your homework and assignment. Because if you don't, your faculty will not be so happy about it. <laughs> Check the resources at the library. Also, remember to take care of yourself and enjoy college life. Find a hobby, get to know others, take part in student and campus activities. Maybe there's thoughts I share with you will take you just to graduation. Well, that's fine with me. You, know, you want to know why? Because I know you will encounter so many other great faculty at ESF that will welcome you, that will guide you, and that will train you and equip you for the next finish lines that will wait for you after graduation. For now, you are about to start a new adventure at ESF. Let's just celebrate this one while we are fi fixing our eyes on the future ones. Under my name and the name of the other faculty, I welcome you and congratulate you. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Malika Carter, the Chief Diversity Officer for the college. Dr. Carter came to ESF in 2017 as the college's first diversity officer. Whoo, it's hot under there. I'd like to begin welcoming everyone to today's convocation. On behalf of all of us, again, we have a very, very diverse and welcoming community, and I hope that you can see that. I really hope that you can see that. My name is Dr. Malika Carter. My gender pronouns are she, her, hers. And I am ESF's Chief Diversity Officer. Very blessed. As Chief Diversity Officer, I provide leadership and strategic direction to ESF's campuses for developing and implementing a portfolio of affirmative action, inclusion, equity, and diversity programs and initiatives. I'd also like to thank Laura Crandall for inviting me to speak here today. And I also wish to thank all of those who have helped in organizing today's event. I'd like to begin my remarks by sharing with you ESF's institutional statement on diversity that I had the honor of composing as I joined the SUNY ESF community. It reads as thus, diversity is a source of strength, creativity, and innovation for ESF. We value the contributions of each person and respect the profound ways their identity, culture, background, experience, status, abilities, and opinions enrich the college community. We commit ourselves to the pursuit of excellence in teaching, research, outreach, and diversity as inextricably linked goals. Thanks to the continued leadership of the employees in the Office of Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity, the institution's Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity Committee, the President's Office, as well as commitment and efforts of many others throughout the ESF community, ESF remains steadfast in its actions of remaining and becoming a truly diverse and inclusive campus. ESF values each student's identity. Let me share with you one example how. The ESF Live Name Committee was formed to update our student information processes so students can be called the name that they identify as. You can enter your name now if, however you would like to be called in my ESF and upon your request. The Live Name Committee can directly connect with you and update your name in the ESF and SU information systems. We're very proud of that. While there is much to be done, together we must refine our vision and what needs to be done and how to make that happen to exact inclusion, diversity, equity, and accountability. As for our first time students, we welcome 179 female, 135 males. Of this group, there are 28 females and nine males students of color. As far as our transfer student cohort, we welcome 89 female and 93 males and one student who did not indicate a binary identity. 
of this group, there are 15 female and three male students of color. Although we don't currently have broad data for students who identify as non-binary, it is something that SUNY ESF and Syracuse University are committed to tracking with increased sophistication in the coming future. While these numbers show progress, we have much to do. We take acknowledgement of our diverse employees and our student body seriously. September 1st at 3.30, September 1st at 3.30, September 1st at 3.30, you can join the Inclusive Excellence Mixer where you'll experience fun and fellowship complete with breakout discussion groups such as veterans, women of color, people with disabilities, and others. To register, please visit esf.edu backslash IDE. Under the events section, that's esf.edu backslash IDE. Beyond acknowledgement and celebration opportunities. You'll also be offered elective and required education opportunities, whereby students and employees will be expected to support the progress that has been made and continue our commitment to the pursuit of excellence in teaching, research, outreach, and diversity as inextricably linked goals. Thank you for making SUNY ESF a part of your academic journey and for your time. Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Carter. Now please join me in welcoming to the podium the president of the Undergraduate Student Association, Lexi Chapoulos. Lexi is a member of the class of 2022 studying construction management with a minor in economics. Lexi. Thank you and hello everyone. I am so happy to be here with you all in person right in front of me. Uh, this is great. I'm Lexi Chipolis and I am in my fifth and hopefully final year here at ESF, double majoring in construction management and sustainable energy management. Originally from Indiana, I come a long way to be at ESF and it is worth every second of the 10 hour drive, give or take. I'm also the president of USA, the Undergraduate Student Association, the student government for undergraduate students here at ESF. We allocate the student activities fee, plan events, and keep the campus connected. We also support the over 40 clubs and special interest groups run by students just like you. USA is here to support you, represent you, and make sure your voice is heard. I am so excited to see you all back on campus for this coming semester. With the amazing community we have here at ESF, there is no doubt in my mind that we will come back stronger and better than ever, and that is thanks to you all as well. As you begin your first year here, the most important thing to remember is that this community is here to help you grow and succeed. We are all here for you and we're just a phone call, email, or coffee away. The only mistake you can make is not utilizing all of the amazing support and resources that are available to you. USA will be here the entire time to help with any bumps in the road along the way as we continue to adjust to this new and changing world. Please feel open to reach out to me anytime you have any questions, concerns, or great ideas. You are already a member of USA, and we would love to see you at our meetings and events this coming semester. Thank you so much for being here, and I wish you the very best of luck as you begin your amazing journey. Now join me in welcoming our Graduate Student Association President, Melanie Berger. Melanie serves as the GSA President, Class of 2023, and is a PhD student in environmental biology, majoring in fish and wildlife biology management. Melanie. Okay, microphone is everywhere. <laughs> um, hi, y'all, and welcome to ESF, and happy Friday. My name is Melanie, I use she, her pronouns, but you can call me Mel. I was always meant to be a stumpy. As a kid, I loved animals and stories about anthropomorphic wildlife more than anything else in the world. It was this love that forced me to get over my fear of getting dirt on my face, in my hair, and worst of all, in my socks. Um, it was this love that led to the biggest challenge my parents ever had to face, raising a picky teenage vegetarian. Some of you might relate to some of this. Um, it was also this love that turned me into a stubborn 17-year-old 
who carried a single-use water bottle with her for nine days during a vacation when no recycling bins were to be found. And that experience led to a college essay that got me into my dream school. Since then, I've strived to follow my heart when it comes to my career, from my first round of grad school in Australia and New Zealand, to agency positions in New York and Florida, and now I've followed my passions to Syracuse, pursuing knowledge for the species that need it most and becoming Batman at the same time. Passion, specifically a passion for our world and the other organisms we share it with, is what brought us all here. Passion is what makes us a community. And passion is what makes you the newest class of ESF students, Stumpies. While I'm welcoming you, welcoming you all to ESF, I also want to especially welcome all of the new graduate students to the Graduate Student Association GSA. Every single one of you brings something new, exciting, and a new perspective to our community. And I really hope that you come check us out. Our meetings are open and our topics are broad. The GSA Senate works hard each year to provide grads with programs, opportunities, and activities to enhance your graduate experience at ESF. We have Senate members, members dedicated to planning research elevator pitch competitions, grants and award and travel funding opportunities, professional development workshops, and garden parties. All you need to do is show up. We are here to uplift and support you through your journey, so please take us on our invitation to join us. I'm so excited to see you all on campus and in person again. Welcome to ESF, and I hope to meet you soon. Now, please join me in welcoming the head orientation leader, Alex Allard, to the uh, podium. Alex is a member of the class of 2022, studying biotechnology. Thank you. Uh, good morning, or I'm still on morning time. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for being here. My name is Alexandra Allard, pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a biotechnology student in the class of 2022, and I speak to you today on behalf of the orientation leaders who are here to guide you and enhance your time here at ESF. This is no doubt one of the most exciting times of your life as you make the changes necessary to become the next incoming class of Stumpies. It is important to remember that you're all here for a purpose of sustainability, conservation, passion for the environment, and a desire for self-improvement. The orientation leaders are students who were in your shoes not too long ago. We've all experienced starting new and working together to build each other up to become the best scholars we can. This is a chance for you to meet like-minded and bright individuals who are going through the same life-changing moments as you. you will, we will be here to guide you through group activities, to be the person you can depend on for advice, guidance, having some of the answers to questions, and of course, to be a reliable friend. You may have noticed the artwork on our t-shirts as we ran around with you all this week. Our theme this year encompasses a lesson we hope that you all take with stride. Let your light shine. This is your time. This is your opportunity to grow and discover your strengths, sometimes your weaknesses, but overall your happiness. Our team is dedicated to ensuring a smooth transition to college life at ESF, and we hope you have an incredible time as you venture on this journey. Do not shy away from the opportunities that come knocking at your door. If I were to give one piece of advice to you all, it would be to extend outside of your comfort zone. Be the person to ask questions in class, volunteer for the club event or campus initiative. There are a million things on the horizon that are just out of reach, and now you are one step closer to achieving all that you strive for. May your time here at SUNY ESF be rewarding and worthwhile. And once again, thank you all for being here. And the final speaker. Welcome, let's welcome to the podium our Dean of Student Affairs, Dean Lombard. And as our final speaker, I will keep my comments very brief for you. I've had the opportunity to be in front of our new students, and I have the privilege of welcoming you again on behalf of my colleagues in the Division of Student Affairs, as well as our faculty and staff across campus. During my presentations to new first year and transfer students yesterday and this morning, one of the things that I talked about is the special sense of community that exists here at the College of Environmental Science and Forestry. We are a small, close-knit, very special community, and we are united with our concern for each other and for the environment. Each of you brings your unique self and your special strengths to our community and we are thrilled that you have chosen ESF as your home for the next several years. Get involved, find your place, 
and get connected. And when you need it, don't be afraid to seek out assistance and ask for help. There are people and resources across our campus and the Syracuse University campus whose job it is to help you be successful. Don't be shy in advocating for yourself and seeking these resources out. Following our convocation this afternoon, we will have you exit out onto the quad where we will have a community-wide dinner. Please make sure you sign the class banner and I look forward to meeting and assisting you throughout this semester, throughout this year, and throughout your time at ESF. So please join me in welcoming back to the podium Provost Newman, who will conclude our time this afternoon together. Real quick, I want to say thank you to all our guests and speakers this afternoon for helping to set the stage for a successful year for all of us. ESF is a great community and you have all been welcomed into it. Have a great year. The first, enjoy, let's enjoy the rest of the afternoon and let's go eat. Thank you. Thank you.